Hello and before moving on in this new wash wicking year, I just wanted to mention a couple of extra things seen or heard recently, but I promise uh, this one will be pretty short. So first of all, during the SIH, we have what we call here the Geneva Watch Week, because additional to the big event that we've covered quite extensively, well, many other brands take this opportunity to surf on the presence of these many guests. Journalists, of course, retailers uh, above all, and even collectors. So the most visible part of the week uh, remains, of course, the SHH, but uh, some other things are happening. Brands uh, reserve suites in nice hotels. So off we went for some uh, further watchmaking exploration. But in all honesty, we had been quite busy and therefore, and unfortunately, we didn't have uh, that much time to wander around the SHH. Uh, there was uh, a few other things I would have liked uh, to follow up on. So for instance, I am very happy to see that a new and fresh influx has been placed in Le Bétune, the very inspired and creative independent watch brand because they've gone through some rather shaky moments over the last couple of years. So I was of course very happy to know that the brand was present again, but we didn't make it to visit them. And that's really too bad and uh, we'll have uh, to compensate on this one one way or another. On the other hand, we had the chance of uh, visiting Beauvais who introduced a few novelties and it was always a pleasure to see what they came up with. Firstly, in their feminine uh, line, we saw some other fine examples of their micro painting timepieces. In the Lady Amadeo Floyer collection, that's the 39mm 3-day automatic watch. Uh, these paintings are performed on mother of pearls dials. And another interesting example is uh, in the Chateau de Moutier collection, where they actually use uh, luminescent paint for a pretty playful experience, I think. In the men's collection, there was a few novelties too, and one of the common denominator, the denominator, or let's say the trend of the year for them, was a new style of blue lacquered guilloché dial. Something seen on a few timepieces, and the first one we saw was the Virtuoso 5. This is not a new watch uh, per se, but a new interpretation uh, of it with a full dial on one uh, of its side with this new uh, guilloché technique. But the big timepiece uh, of the show for them was the Tourbillon Edouard Beauvais, which is in fact a triple time zone uh, watch. Uh, so the main time zone is with this uh, regular central and hour minute hand. Then you have a small rotating day-night uh, indicator below around the 12 o'clock mark. Uh, this one is rotating in an anti-clockwise move, but then you have two additional time zones uh, with these uh, two dials at three and nine o'clock who are rotating in a clockwise move. I mean, these two domes represent the same view from the South Pole, uh, but you see the entire Earth nevertheless, and then you set the desired time zone uh, totally independently from one another. You have one pusher uh, for the globe and then another one for the hour hand. These are totally independent too, but one set, they move together and on the other side of this timepiece, and again with Beauvais, I mean, it's a real demonstration of their engraving technique with this uh, full Florizan uh, style uh, dial. Quite remarkable. And something quite typical of Beauvais is that uh, you can get this watch either in a white gold, a red gold, or platinum uh, execution, but overall the tourbillon Edouard Beauvais will be limited by the number of calibers produced uh, for this version, meaning a total of 60 timepieces. Uh, quite like their thinking uh, with, with this. Anyhow, in the same hotel, we quickly saw Manufacture Royale, and uh, what they really wanted to put forward this year uh, is the possibility of benefiting from some kind of bespoke service. Uh, what, my, what, what I mean by that is that uh, they want to accompany their customers in making their selection uh, of their choice uh, regarding the colors used, the material used, special customization. And of course, combinations are multiple. And then they want the future owner to be able to follow the making of his timepiece through some kind of web uh, follow-up. Well, I guess it's a way of proposing something a bit different and yet another sign that brands uh, need to focus on differentiating uh, factors to exist and evolve. And quickly following what I mentioned in the last uh, prime time with the full acquisition of net porte by the Richemont Group, this was for sure a big statement on how business is going to evolve, uh, brands developing their own take on distribution and sales. Well, another big, big move that was uh, just announced over the last few days was the full purchase of American watch retailer Tourneau uh, by the Swiss retailer Bücherer. Uh, we knew since a little while that Tourneau was facing some pretty tough times and we had also heard about Bücherer's interest since a few months. But I guess the due diligence process of this acquisition must have been a pretty thorough one. 
Fisher has, has had some previous experiences on the US soil and that was a few decades ago and didn't uh, end up too well for them at the time so I guess uh, they took this very cautiously but it is most definitely also a great sign of the consolidation between the big big players of the industry. Fisher is now present in a few countries, Switzerland of course, France, Germany, UK and now the US and I'm pretty sure they will not uh, focus only on the brick and mortar point of sales, but the complementary means of physical and digital selling platforms will most certainly prove to be a combination to go by in the years to come. So what are your thoughts over this? Uh, how has your perception of buying watches online evolved over the last uh, few months or couple of years? I mean, I would really be interested in uh, knowing your thought about this because obviously this is something that everybody is talking about right now. So thanks for watching. I'm I must say I'm pretty happy to move on and uh, get some new and fresh content out there. All the very best to you. See you real soon. Thanks for watching.